on X Play. Galactic Warfare. Crotch Rocket Agony. Oh my God! And Metroid Prime Hunters. Turn into a slug. <laughs> it's game time. They weren't shot this week. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Awesome. Welcome to X Play. It's nature's broom. On today's show, we explore the broad spectrum of life in the universe. From the algae growing in your city's water supply to the bird flu festering in your neighbor's swan, life crops up in the strangest of places. Today, we take a look at galactic civilizations too, which gives you the opportunity to meet extraterrestrial species and then conquer them. Adam means liberate them. Yes, I do. We also review Tourist Trophy, a motorcycle racing game from the makers of Gran Turismo. And we revisit the Ice Age to review Ice Age 2. But we won't revisit it that much because it was very cold. It made the dinosaurs die. If only the dinosaurs had sweater technology. I know. And later in the show, we review Metroid Prime Hunters as it seeks to eradicate alien life on the DS. But first, the glorious space conquest is coming to a PC near you. Here's our review of Galactic Civilizations 2, Dreadlords. Long ago, powerful beings fought a desperate civil war across the galaxy. Do you dig Civilization IV but find yourself wishing it had been more lasers and aliens and spaceships? Then you've been yearning for Galactic Civilizations II, and you didn't even know it. Galaxy of II plays a lot like its historical cousin, which is about the highest compliment you can pay a game like this. The first Galaxy of was very clicky. Players suffocated under menus, mouse buttons wore out, and the tear shed were collected and dumped into the Dead Sea which is why the water there is so salty. But with the sequel, everything is streamlined, intuitive, and pretty self-explanatory. You only have to tell ships where to go once. Turns are over quickly, and the game is so customizable that you can tweak nearly any aspect to your liking. The basic idea is to colonize the galaxy by any means necessary, militarily, politically, or technologically. You build up a home base and a fleet to snag the most fertile planets before the ugly green guys do. Unless, of course, you are the ugly green guys. More planets mean more money, which means more technology, and that means better ships. And Galsiv 2's absurdly detailed shipbuilder will keep you busy for a very, very long time. You can make just about anything you want. I like that. I'll call it Shippy Ship. It's a ship. Here, my formidable fleet flocks to fortify the force fighting for a foothold on a far-flung frontier world. Effective, though less than spectacular. Ground us all time. Whoa, as you can see, we're a little outnumbered here. Maybe I should stick to political intrigue. Look, I know it might not exactly overheat your graphics card or anything, but you have a giant sandbox of stars and endless customization wrapped up in a tortilla of great gameplay. Even if turn-based strategy usually sounds about as enjoyable as being drop-kicked by a giraffe, Galsiv 2 just might change your mind. A five out of five. Oh, megalomania games, you speak to the little dictator in us all. I think it would be good if more political leaders played strategy games. It would teach them to be fascist, warmongering slave drivers. No, no, efficient leaders. Still, it's a hell of a game. Five out of fives are special moments for everyone here at X-Play. Watching a new game full of promise entering the world is a little bit like giving birth. Except no placenta. But we do have the next best thing. Here's our historical retrospective on the place of aliens in video games. They've assimilated into our video games. They fought us on Earth and out there. Enemy forces are superior, Galactica. And we treat them so, so badly. They are the few, the downtrodden, the non-Earthlings. <laughs> and they've been here for years. They are the aliens, and this is their story. Aliens, the secret connection to video games. As we all know, aliens have been on Earth since July 2nd, 1947, when they crashed near Roswell, New Mexico. Was it an accident? Or was there something else at play? 
A leading scientist believes our government reverse-engineered video games from alien technology, borrowed from the crash site. This is just between me and you. This information was suppressed for years. Roswell was only the beginning. Until this happened. With the popularity of space invaders, the alien immigrants hoped a treaty between aliens and humans could be reached. Until this happened. A game so bad that it set back alien-human relations for decades. The failure of the E.T. game would lead to a long period of darkness for the alien culture. Yes, aliens appeared in video games, but generally only as hapless patsies or violent killers. Neither is completely accurate. Even when a fleshed-out alien was brought to video games, said character was forcibly adopted by America. It broke the aliens' hearts. Aliens are a hard-working, honest, God-fearing race. But the video game world was not finding this out. This reporter applauds the demise of the pathetic human species. <laughs> Yet, with money tight and alien families to feed, many an alien lowered himself in order to get their faces and voices out there in any way possible. Right of all. Then, in 2005, two games were released that aliens hoped would change everything. Area 51, and destroy all humans. Aliens everywhere hoped that America's dirty secret of alien experimentation would be brought to light. With destroy all humans, aliens thought, finally, a game they could call their own. Alas, it was more of the same. Area 51 ignored the truth of the torturous alien experiments and went with the worn out alien cannon fodder concept and destroy all humans while having aliens as the heroes was just a silly farce. A cartoon, if you will, not to be taken seriously. It's probing time. Will aliens have their day in the video game sun? Will they be finally accepted? Only the future knows for sure. I'm Morgan Webb. Good night. All this complaining about illegal aliens is really starting to bug me. Are you going to want to make one of those illegal alien, space alien jokes and imply they're going to start deporting Klingons? No, I was just going to use my television show for indulgent liberal political grandstanding. That's offensive both to me and to the medium of television generally. Gosh, I'm sorry. I never thought liberal political grandstanding is for awards shows and talk show appearances. All right, I'll save my leftist diatribes for the next time I'm kicking it with Byron Allen, all right? Agreed. Now you have something to look forward to. And the audience can look forward to our review of Metroid Prime Hunters later in the show. After the break, cruel, beautiful failure. And later, Metroid Prime Hunters. Horrified yet fascinated by Wild and Out, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Welcome back to x -Play. Back in 1985, Tom Cruise noted that he had the need the need for speed. Since then, he's also expressed a need for pseudo-religious counseling, a wife shorter than he is, and quality legal teams to defend him from certain accusations. A legal team of such high quality that we're not going to be able to make a joke about the thing we'd like to be able to make a joke about. But you know what we're talking about. <laughs> so why don't you make a joke about it yourselves in the privacy of your own home? <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> like he's the father. <laughs> but in tribute to the need to bolster your masculine image, we've got a motorcycle racing game. Tourist trophy for the PS2. No, you aren't looking at Gran Turismo Motorcycle Edition. This is Tourist Trophy for the PS2. You won't be surprised to learn that this game is made by the same company as that long-running series and contains a lot of the same micromanagement options. Once you pick from over 100 crotch rockets, it's time to outfit your racer as he poses seductively. Okay, let's move on. You can customize almost every aspect of your vehicle, from your exhaust to your roller weights. Also adjustable is your riding form, AKA the way you sit on the bike. You can change your head angle, your torso roll, even your leg position from normal to Y to I'm about to give birth. On a strictly technical level, Tourist Trophy is superb, delivering polished visuals, slick replays, and precise control. No detail is too small for this game. Even the pitch of the wind whipping past you takes into account your character's height and weight. 
But like the Gran Turismo series before it, Tourist Trophy gets demerits for its cold, clinical presentation. There's something truly uninviting about the lack of announcer or realistic crowd. Are those supposed to be humans? Also, some basic voice acting would really spice up the crashes. Observe. Okay, gonna just pump the rear brakes and... Oh my god! Oh, that hurts! That's better. Speaking of crashes, prepare to eat a lot of gravel as you'll learn the intricacies of taking hairpin turns at 150 miles an hour. Tourist Trophy features a steep learning curve that will scare off even veteran racers. That's our way of saying that the game is hard. Fortunately, two-player mode allows you to race against a friend who hopefully is worse than you. Once you hit grass or dirt, you completely lose your sense of balance. It may be realistic, but it's also pretty frustrating. All right, gotta get right back on that horse. Conquer your fears. Oh no, oh no, I didn't mean to switch to first person view. Oh no, oh, 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 God. The game includes something called best shot photo mode, where you can generate a spreadsheet of gorgeous vanity pictures of yourself. Perfect for the narcissistic motorcycle rider in all of us. It also allows you to watch instant replays with annoying music, like this Ollie titled song, I Against a Speed. I Against a Speed. It makes us wonder where we can buy the soundtrack so we can destroy it. Let's face it, any game that bothers to map the front and rear brakes to different buttons is obviously targeting the most hardcore of hardcore bike nerds. And they'll love this game. For the rest of us, Tourist Trophy is a three out of five. Okay, this is it. Slow and steady wins the race. I'll just ease off the throttle and... Oh, 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 oh! I was killed instantly on impact! Ah. Motorcycles aren't just an exciting motorsport hobby. They're also a great way to convince the ladies you're a badass. If you're Fonzie. Or someone's dad. Yeah, the chicks dig a man who can spend extended periods of time with something vibrating between their legs. In a moment, ah! take that, reptiles, and later, Metroid Prime Hunter. For a job on The View, it's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. I love Joy. I'd be perfect for that show. No? Welcome back to X-Play. 220 million years ago, a group of animals began to separate themselves. Animals with strange new powers, like a defensive shield of protein, the ability to control their body temperature. And most amazingly, the ability to excrete a tasty beverage out of modified squat glands that are pink and extremely sensitive. We speak, of course, of mammals, the biological order to which all humans belong. Except for magician David Copperfield and several members of the 89 Oakland Aves. Mm. Recently, a series of children's films has paid tribute to the bizarre, impressive power of mammals. Mainly that it's slightly harder for us to freeze to death. Here's our view of Ice Age 2, The Meltdown. We all thought 2006 would mean the return of the Stone Age. Turns out at the box office, Ice Age beats the Stone Age. As in Ice Age 2, The Meltdown. Someone set the ice-bound Earth on defrost, and it's causing quite a stir amongst its prehistoric inhabitants. Our main characters, Manny the Mammoth, Diego the Saber-Toothed Tiger, and Sid the Sloth, are all attempting to flee the scene. But rarely will you be playing any of these characters. Uh, it's just that stinky old bear. For a majority of the game, you will play as Scrat, a happy-go-unlucky squirrel, rat, marmot, or mammal on a quest for, well, nuts. <laughs> and by nuts, we're talking about the dried fruit in which the ovary wall turns very hard, stony, or woody at maturity. I hear they're really tasty. You know what I mean. Scratch, who is oblivious to the whole meltdown situation, only has one thought on his peanut-sized mind. He's absolutely nuts about nuts. <laughs> and nuts he shall get. Just like in West Hollywood, by collecting nuts, you get to progress to new levels and unlock special features. Special features that have interviews with Ray Romano, John Leguizamo, and the pirate from Dodgeball. And that was really pretty much my preparation. It gave me the courage to go in and do Charlie. Collecting nuts may seem like an easy task, but some nuts are just hard to get a hold of. Sometimes our furry friend has to dig, break ice, or sniff a bush just to obtain a nut. A 
Other times he'll do extreme sports such as scaling walls, cave diving, zip lining, or getting farted on by a flatulent prehistoric bear. Wow, that was great. I feel like a new bear. Yeah, you sure don't look like a bear. You look more like an Andalusian llama. Just like any platformer, Scratch will encounter plenty of enemies, as well as new friends. Friends who will want your help and offer their nuts in return. Here's that nut. And just like any video game based on a kid-geared movie, the mini-games are quite plentiful. Everything from playing dead, to throwing rocks at monkeys, to penguin bowling. And in two instances, you actually get to play the main characters. Diego has possum bashing, Sid has some sort of DDR-esque air dancing game, while Manny has absolutely nothing. One truly is the loneliest number. Ice Age 2 has to be one of the better titles that game companies try to pawn off to kids or nut lovers. The controls are simple, the levels look good, and our little hero is a badass. <laughs> Collecting nuts isn't really rewarding, and like Scratch, the game is very short. There are only a few notable bosses, like this bunghole with eyes. Oh, did he just crawl into there? We give Ice Age 2 the meltdown three nuts out of five. There's nothing worse than when a children's game tries to be hilarious. Children don't have a sense of humor. They're too busy trying to learn not to defecate on themselves in public. Children should stick to the things they're good at, looking cute and making shoes in Indonesian sweatshops. Mm. Their tiny hands produce very fine stitching. I know, you can see it on all the shoes. Yeah. Up next, the most dangerous game of all. Metroid Prime Hunters. One of them is an Israeli spy. It's Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. I'm the little drummer girl. Welcome back to X-Play. We've been waiting for months for the newest addition to the roster of Metroid games. Samus's first foray onto the DS will also be the first online shooter for the handheld. But if you're looking for platformers about adorable creatures and magical lands, the DS can take care of you. But you're probably not. No. Here's a review of Metroid Prime. Hunters. Metroid Prime Hunters is probably the most highly anticipated thing outside of a cure for genital herpes. A demo teased fans when it was first released with the DS, but now gamers are finally getting relief for that long time itch. I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but this title doesn't quite live up to its long awaited release. I think the gameplay experience found in Metroid Prime Hunters is best described as a left-handed happy ending. Sure, you get what you came for, but it still feels a little awkward. I'm speaking, of course, of the controls. Once you get the hang of them, they're smooth and innovative. Until then, however, you will be cursing the touchscreen deities as you try to move Miss Oran around with a combination of the stylus and the D-pad. Oh, ah, damn it! But once they get past that, players reprise the role of Samus Aran, everybody's favorite heroine. This time, she's on the hunt for a little something I like to call Okotalis. I'm not exactly sure why she's after them or what it is they do, but I do know this, Okotaliths are awesome. When I finally find an Okotalith, I pity those who have crossed me. The single player campaign isn't the game's strongest point, although the graphics are very solid for a DS title. The level design is lazy and repetitive. Hey, is it just me, but does that boss look like my neighbor's dog when he's happy to see me? No Metroid game would be complete without Morph Ball mode. And you bet this Metroid game is complete. Man, that reminds me of a giant game of Labyrinth. Before high-tech handheld systems like the DS, we used to look forward to the ego-crushing excitement of games like Labyrinth and Simon. New generation wires have no idea. Anyway, the multiplayer aspect is a lot like an Akatolith. Pretty awesome. Gamers have the option to place any of the bosses and rage against their friends in the standard battle mode. Unfortunately, there are no Akatolis. Consider yourselves lucky. All in all, this title delivers a solid gameplay experience, but still fails to live up to the heightened expectations. The multiplayer feature is very nice, but the single player campaign seems like it must have been an afterthought. In the end, we give Metroid Prime Hunters three Akatolis out of five. I wish I could turn into a slug. I think finding a secure place to nap at the office would be easier 
if I could turn into a slug. I don't understand how a mech suit for a human being can turn you into a three foot long slug. Wouldn't it like crush your body? No, I see, I think your body goes into interdimensional space, like Optimus Prime's trailer when he turns into the robot. Okay, speaking of grossly logical things, it's time for viewer mail. Today's letter comes from Zach. He writes, Dear X-Play, is there gonna be a Kingdom Heats 3 come out in two or three years? Yeah, Kingdom Heats. I don't know about Kingdom Heats. Maybe Kingdom Hearts, uh, and yeah. we don't know. Yeah, see, Kingdom Hearts 2 just came out. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have been asking us about Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, I don't know, for the past two years, see, we thought maybe, maybe the noise would end for a few brief, blessed, glorious weeks. But no, as soon as you get something, you just start demanding more. Also, you know what, for the record, I am not the internet. It is not my job to do research for you. So, in conclusion, we don't know. Look it up. Are I'm there lying. any movies left for a Kingdom Hearts 3? Ugh, they'll make I more. I do like the three Cavaleros. Another Chicken Little. Ugh. Ugh.